if I see a book with a great title, I automatically assume great content. And this is exactly what happened here. I heard the title Mother Goose on the Loose and I immediately wanted to know more. And if I wanted to know more, I'm guessing you do too. That's why we have Dr. Betsy Diamond Cone here, the creator of Mother Goose on the Loose to share with us what is that exactly? Because I really want to know more. Well, thank you so much for having me here, Lauren. It's a pleasure. Mother Goose on the Loose is actually an early literacy program for parents or caregivers with babies from birth to the age of two. At least that's what it started out being, uh, but it's expanded and now it's not, it's not only an early literacy program, but it's a great parenting tool. It's a way for grandparents to connect with their grandchildren. It's a program that's offered in public libraries and now it's offered for kids up to the age of five, for school age kids, even for senior citizens. So it's really expanded. <laughs> it really has. So Betsy, how did you get started? Where did this idea come from? I am a children's librarian and I've been doing regular old story time in the public library here in the States. I moved to Israel in 1986, met a great guy, had a son, and I was doing story times there. But story time at that time was basically for three to five year olds. There wasn't anything in the library world for kids under three. And I found about a music class. So I took my son to a music class in English by a wonderful woman named Barbara Cass Beggs. She was a Canadian uh, professional opera singer who trained music teachers. She'd studied with Kodai and Orff, these greats of music education. And she devoted her retirement years to developing a program of teaching music to parents and babies. So luckily enough, she came to Israel. I signed up and I took the class with her. And I loved it so much that when she offered to um, train people to become instructors, I became an instructor. I did programs in a local maternity hospital. I did them at friends' houses. And all the while I was carrying all these musical instruments and tote bags with me on the bus and it was really difficult. And after a year, I thought that in my library, I had an empty storage closet. So I sat down at the kitchen table. I combined what I already knew about using picture books with young children and presenting programs to them with Barbara's theories and her wonderful songs that were really appropriate for the youngest children. At that time, I was at the Israel Museum in Jerusalem in the youth wing. So I went to the head and I said, I have a new program. We're doing already preschool story time for three to five year olds. This is a program for parents with babies under three. Is it okay if I do it? And she said, no one's gonna come. But I said, let me try it. So I tried it and we had four people the first week, then more, then more. And Mother Goose and Luce ran in the Israel Museum for the rest of the time I lived in Israel. I was there for 12 years. So it gave me plenty of time to tweak it, figuring out what worked, what didn't work and to get feedback. And I loved it because I had a room full of Christians, Jews, Muslims, people of the Baha'i faith, people who didn't tell me what faith they were, but everyone was singing together and clapping for each other's children. So it created a community. And although you hear on the news, all these crazy stories about Israel, with Mother Goose on the Loose, people were brought together and became true friends. And that's, I guess, why I became such a big fan of it. So in the meantime, you've come back to the States. You've expanded, obviously, across generations. <laughs> you've created additional programming for it. So how does it exist today? What does it look like today? The basic Mother Goose on the Loose is a program in public libraries for parents with babies from birth to age two. But when I, I and I earn my living by going around and training people on how to do Mother Goose and Loose programs. But my trainings are talking about the theory behind it, the research that supports it, explaining that it's not just fun and it's not just early literacy, but we're teaching children important life skills like how to take turns and how to feel good about yourself and how to follow directions and pay attention. But it's through fun interaction with the adult in their life. So it bonds them together too. 
And I tell people at the trainings, once you've learned how to do it, here's the format, but don't adopt my script. Create your own script. Use the songs that you like and know. Maybe a lullaby your grandparents sang to you. If you speak another language, use that language and make it your own. Put your skills and your talents in. Because of that, people have taken it to multiple places. It's been used in prisons um, to teach parents how, how to uh, share books with their kids. It's been used uh, for seniors and senior centers as something that brings them joy because they remember all these nursery rhymes from their youth. It's been used for new immigrants to help teach them English and acculturation. Uh, so it's really been used in all kinds of places for all kinds of reasons. That's amazing. And I'm guessing that you never even imagined that that's where it would go. No, sometimes it seems like a fairy tale to me. <laughs> when I moved to the States, I interviewed for a job with the Pratt Library System here in Baltimore. And during my interview, I said, by the way, I have this program called Mother Goose on the Loose for parents with babies from birth to age two. Is it OK if I do it? And rather than the response I got in Israel, this time the response was, we want you to do it. Because in the years I'd been living abroad, all of this brain research came out about neuroscientists were able to use technology to understand how learning works. And they were publishing articles in mainstream magazines like Time and Newsweek that the architecture of the brain starts in the earliest years of life. And the first years are the most important years for having experiences that their brain would continue to build on. And so parents were coming to the public library and saying, what do you have for my one-year-old, my six-month-old? And there was no tradition. And there was no Google to go back and consult and say, what should I do? Mm -hmm. So I had this great program. I wrote an article in a public library magazine. And then people started calling me from all over the country to train them. And then it won an award. And I won an award. And from there, it just blossomed. So for our viewers, many of whom are grandparents of these babies that you're referring to, is there a way for them to engage over the distance, especially now that everything is remote? How, how can they possibly access Mother Goose on the Loose? Great question. Well, if you have a child near you, you can go to your local public library and attend a Mother Goose on the Loose program. And if they don't have one, you can ask the librarian to contact me and, and, and have some. Um, I'm also doing trainings on webinars now since we can't meet in person. But by the same token, adults are now and grandparents are having conversations, interactions with their grandchildren online. In fact, I have my first grandchild and uh, up until he was six and a half months old, all of our contact was through the internet. So you can use the songs and the rhymes. It's not just talking, it's not just singing, but it's doing finger plays and leaning. So you're enriching their vocabulary and you're teaching them skills, they're using their fine motor skills. And along with that, at one point, I actually had a Kickstarter campaign. I wanted to create kits because Mother Goose and Loose uses certain props like colored scarves and bells and maracas. And I thought it would be really great if we could have a kit that public libraries could then lend out after the program. And a researcher contacted me and she said, I'm a grandparent. I think you should sell those kits so I could buy one and send one to my daughter. And then when we're online together, we could do the activities with the scarves. I thought it was a great idea. My Kickstarter campaign didn't work. But now that we have COVID in the isolation, I'm thinking of trying to figure out a way to do it again. I think that's genius. I know that when my niece and nephew were small and I was living across the country. And so, so many of our interactions were across the distance and they knew my voice, but there wasn't, you know, there wasn't a lot we could actually do together. So I know that aunties and uncles, grandparents, even cousins across the distance, it sounds like a wonderful opportunity. And I would have loved a kit like that, that would give me the activities that I could actually use in real time. So yeah. Can I show you an example? Time. Yeah, please. Okay. So this is a scarf rhyme that's from Barbara Cass Beggs. Window, window, wind, I say, what are you blowing away today? Scarves, oh, scarves, oh, scarves, I say, I am blowing the scarves away. Blow and let go. <laughs> and you can 
see that a child of any age, five and under, it's not limited to babies, would love that. And can you imagine doing it over the internet at the same time? And you don't need a scarf. You can use a paper towel, use a dishcloth. But it's a feather. Use anything. Yeah, you, it could be scarves, but it could be feathers. So it's just a lot of fun. That's wonderful. And I have to ask you, where'd you get the title? When I was a librarian in New Jersey, I moved to a new library, the Metuchen Public Library, and they had a program for two-year-olds. And I don't remember if it was called Mother Goose on the Loose already, or if I was just tossing around ideas. But I had something, I did have a program in New Jersey that I called Mother Goose on the Loose. So then when I got involved in this song and rhyme based program for very young children, it just seemed like that would be a great name. And I love it. It is. It is a great name. Even if I, you know, if it were a book and it just had that title and a bunch of blank pages inside, I would still love it to be my <laughs> journal. I think it's a wonderful title. I think what you've created is unique and wonderful. Who knew that there was nothing for that early stage learner? And listen, we're singing to our kids in utero. So Betsy, I see you have a number of other titles. You've got Hatchlings and you've got Goslings. And so you've really covered the whole gamut of, <laughs> of these. But what is the difference between those programs? Mother Goose and Loose Goslings is a program I developed with Dr. Brenda Hussey Gardner from the University of Maryland Medical Center. It's a program for parents with babies in the NICU. Parents with those super fragile babies need to know how they can interact with their babies in developmentally appropriate ways. And so we teach them how to recognize the signals the babies are giving and then how to talk, sing, and share books with them in appropriate ways. So they actually have a role to play even while their baby's in that fragile state. And that's the goslings. What about the hatchlings? Hatchlings is a program I'm developing with the Maryland State Library. It's a program for teaching parents who are expectant parents how to talk and sing and share books with their babies in utero. That's called Hatchlings Ready to Hatch. And Hatchlings in the Nest is for parents once they've had their babies while they're still newborns to, again, explain how you can use books without reading them out loud, but how you can start right at birth to play and sing and talk with your baby. Amazing. Just so interesting how you've absolutely covered every stage of, of the child's life. We know that there's education going on from the very, very earliest times. So congratulations on really a stupendous evolution of something that was so necessary. And thank you for coming to share with us today. I really hope our viewers will reach out to you. Where can they find you? My website is www.mgol.net and I do have a contact button so you can reach me that way. And I always love to hear from people. So please don't be shy, www.mgol.net. I'm sure they're gonna be looking and you can just wait for the inquiries to come in. Dr. Betsy Diamond Cone, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you.